feel like I should be wearing a bit of a ski mask right now, ladies and gentlemen. But hello, everyone. This is Siege and Ovo 992, and today we're back for another brand new video. A brand new video discussing the old form, so you know exactly what that means. Everyone is losing their minds, and it's our jobs to come here collectively and try to discuss and get a bit of sanity <laughs> discussing at a game that was filled with insanity, ladies and gentlemen. Is that game right there? was mental, you know, we spent many years together on this channel, you know, we have grew up together, we've made mistakes, we've had some great highs, we've made some unfortunate lows, and we've shared those experiences together, but truly, this one right here, this old form feels very, very unique, as there is so many different emotions, so many turning points, so many feelings that were sprinkled through to it, maybe for the first time ever, I feel speechless, and for the large majorities, that's a good thing. But I can imagine there will be people coming in and seeing the demeanour, maybe seeing the smile and being a little bit confused because there's this weird narrative out there that <laughs> Rangers are celebrating a draw. How embarrassing. They know their levels. They know their levels. We were 2-0 down versus our title rivals playing the worst football we've ever played in our season. We were about to be four points. Four points behind in the league, crunch time gone in to the last few games of the season. But somehow, some way, we came back and battled our way for 2 0 doing to two each twice, by the way. And don't worry, we'll actually get there before considering a sucker blow one minute after that, before relying and getting an unbelievable 94th minute equaliser. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, if the Rangers fans aren't kicking and foaming at their mouth, sorry if you can't comprehend the fact that we were about to be four points behind in the league, but now we fought and scrapped our way to give us the opportunity on Wednesday night to go back top of the league when we're all level keel is something you can't comprehend because to me, that's what... I take for that, because what did we talk about coming into this game? This was a must not lose, but I didn't want us to set about our business trying to draw it, because I feel like at home you've got to always try to win your games, but it's a must not lose scenario, and for the large parts of that game between me and thee, it looked like we were going to lose that game. We cannot play worse than that ever versus Celtic, but somehow, some way, we came away with Sahar, and it's all still even up. Yes, we've got to go to Parkhead, yes, we've got to do this, but we're not relying on anybody else taking points off Celtic, or relying on that, which again, it looked like, so that's where I sit with this one, ladies and gentlemen, I almost feel like I fell in the canal and came out with a salmon, because it looked dead and buried at half time. but somehow, some way, this team continues to fight, and the mentality that's been installed by this manager, Phil Clement, is that right there. Because let's be honest, are there players in that team that's probably not going to be here next year? No. Is there players in that team that Clement probably doesn't want? Aye, ladies and gentlemen. He's having to play players and rely on players that he probably doesn't have full belief in and can't give you exactly what he's got. But this man's doing miracles with an absolute mess and the mentality aspect is something that this guy has bled in because that game there is a loss every day of the week. Us bringing it back to two each and getting stabbed in the heart a minute later was Edward-esque a couple years ago. We've seen that, but the resiliency in this Rangers team, the never say die, the never beat attitude, this gaffer has injected into this team is the true definition of a Rangers team, so I think you can find pride in that, listen, I'm still raging, and when we start talking about the first half, you'll hear me ranting, there is still frustration, there is still embarrassment, there is confusion based on a lot of that game, but my end result is when I sit and look at the team that were dead and buried at half time, I can get behind that and I can be proud of my team for scrapping and fighting for their lives and continue to keep the league in our hands because that was the priority. Win, lose, draw, you always want to have it in your hands and that's where it is. We didn't rely on anybody taking points off Celtic, we didn't need to do this. It's completely in our hands and that has to be the priority and again, we are not the team that's bottled an 8 point lead. We are not the team that's bottled a 2-0 lead in this game to go 4 points clear in the league. That is not us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're fighters, we're scrappers, we are fighting above expectations on what we've seen in a couple players, and that is who we are, and this never say die attitude is right here in Rangers Football Club, and that's what you saw the day with that battling, spirited, free-free comeback, and aye, 
I still can't believe it. And if you're familiar with this channel, this is usually where I pick out A, B and C as who positively impacted the game and they were the main reasons we got a result. But I can't do that today. I genuinely can't because truthfully, despite me feeling pride in the way the team battled for the depths and out of the hole that they truthfully dug in the game of football, I can't sit here and applaud that overall performance because it was dreadful, lads, honestly. And the bigger conversation should be why Celtic couldn't beat us playing that badly because we can't hand it mayor we can't gift wrap the three points mayor in an old firm game than we did the day but our resiliency showed and we battled back in it but I'm not going to sit here and cheerlead and start pricking out A, B and C is impressive because for a large majority of it it was dreadful ladies and gentlemen it was a team spirit aye but individuals there just wasn't enough quality and I feel like I'm starting to lose my mind in terms of these old firms especially the last couple because they're all the same they are all the same. They start off, we sit off, we contain in and trying to defend. Uh, Celtic just pile people forward, they attack us and press and press and press. They run riot in the first half. We have to come out scrapping, then we need to start playing actual football, then we get stuck in, then we pile people forward, then we create chances. But my question to every person who's watching today's video is why? Why does it take every old form for us to be doing at half time for us to start playing the way we should be starting these games? Because people will look at the first goal for Celtic and call it luck and clearly it's a fluke, right? But sometimes in life you're better to, it's better to be lucky than good. And I think that perfectly sums up Maeda. As I don't think he's necessarily a great footballer or anything like that, but he works his arse off and he makes that as he chases it doing. But how does it happen? It's a press. Lads, where was your press in the first half? Genuinely, I'm asking. It was non-existent, it was slow, it was passive. The mindset was not there. And that's my biggest frustration when I look at that first half is, again, I didn't think we went into that game with players that believed they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe right away and go after them. I'm just going to say it how it is. People can say the game plan was ripped up because they scored in 20 seconds. That's nonsense. In fact, that should make it... That's a mere in my point. If you... After going behind, we should have then be bombing forward, but still, it was sitting off, it was giving space away, the right-hand side was a disgrace for Rangers, I'm not going to sit here and just pick on Scott Wright, because we know what Scott Wright is as a player, he shouldn't be anywhere near this, but he's relied on because no one else is fit, and for me, I don't know what he was asked today today, because he wasn't pressing, he wasn't helping Tavernier, he was just floating about doing cardio, and I just didn't understand it, but I'm not going to pick on that laddie, I want to turn my attention to the other side, because I was absolutely disgusted with Fabio Silva today, truly, the way he approached this game was mortifying, being a Rangers fan, and he played a major part in why Celtic were so dominant in the first half, because the boy was too busy throwing himself about in the ground, and going like this with no contact, and rolling about and lying down like he had been sniped, and what that was doing is the game was flown because there was no contact, so Celtic had the ball and they were playing against 10 men, that's been a passenger, and you can't afford a single person to be near that level, but every time, man, he was just flopping like a fish, and honestly, I was mortified, the way that Todd Cantwell was hung out to dry in that European game, getting subbed off in half an hour, it's an absolute crime that Silva wasn't subbed off earlier than that is, I've just not got any time for that, sorry lads, I know it's a modern day game, and maybe I'm getting old now, and I'm moaning at the moon and all that, but see all that, ah! nah, no for me, it's no for me, especially in an old form, and aye, he was a major reason in why Celtic were utterly dominant in the first half, because he spent more time on the deck than anything else. But we mentioned Wright, we mentioned Silva, and the next person goes to Lawrence, is the major pr reason why I think Celtic were utterly dominant, is the three behind Essers, and the three in front of Diamandi and Lunny, who weren't great either, by the way, just weren't they? at the races the day, it just never worked out, I didn't like it when I first seen it, that's why I never tweeted out any of my jokes, it just kind of made me a wee bit nervous, I didn't like it at all, and they were dreadful the day, honestly, Scotty Wright, we know what to expect, it's another big game that he starts and he's subbed off at half time, you know what I mean, water's wet, why do we keep doing it all the time in the lad day, the guy must have the mentality, strength, uh, son, because to keep taking their blows, to keep playing like that and get flung into the deep end and be withdrawn and get cheered up, it's, it's incredible the mentality strength that lad he's got, I just wish he was a good footballer, if you know what I mean, and then you've got Lawrence who I thought was just stinking the day, and again, major reason why Celtic were early dominant in the first half, so wasteful in possession so many times, and you expect better for Lawrence, you expect better for Silva and 
they were stinking and them just floating about, not being involved in anything. Lawrence getting the ball and just floating the ball out, underhanding through balls, no shooting when he should shoot. Just summed this Rangers team up in the first half. It was too timid. It was to contain rather than to press and it just never worked. And that was a real surprise to me because after Celtic took the lead 21 seconds into the game as the ball gets played down, Tavernier doesn't know where Maeda is. He should do. He's at his heels every single time. I mean, he gives Tavernier nightmares, that laddie. The only guy that's actually locked him up and put him in a penitentiary was Ridvan Yilmaz at Parkhead. Every other time, Maeda has his way to the full bats because he's so quick. And Tavernier should know he's an experienced player and he tries to react and... This is kind of backing up my opinion on why it was to contain rather than pressing to be brave because I'm looking you right in the eye. If that's anybody else in our league, if that's one of the budget bully squads that we can just go out there and run all over, if that's the Dross, if that's the Livingston and all that of this league, Tavernier's passing that to Butlin, that's going to Lunny, that's going to Goldson, and we're building out. But because it's against Celtic, oh no, it's against Celtic, he just tries to boot it out the park and it hits off Maeda and goes in. And again, I know it's a fluke, fluke. you might be calling it too harsh, but why is he not just rolling that back to Butlin? If it's against the Dross in the league we're doing it, why do we we change so much mentally when we come up against Celtic because it's clear to date me that's what that first half actually was. It wasn't us playing our best football, it wasn't us caring about us, it was us caring too much and showing too much respect to Celtic and how many times, how many times are we going to do that? Game fluke goal, lucky goal, but you make your own luck and that's what an actual press actually brings you. That's what wingers that can impact games can actually bring you. But aye, there wasn't much response and that was a surprise because, I'll be honest, even after conceding so early, it was 21 seconds into the game, I thought, right, we're going to go after them anyway. We can calm it, we'll get back in and we'll go ahead and do this. But there was none, really. We have to jump to the 20th minute of the game where we hit an it and swing in corner. Oh, look at that, eh? See how dangerous it actually is, and it should result in the goal for the first goal for Rangers, I should say, as Diamandi hits it beautifully, meets Connor Goldson, and CB number one, as I've called him many years on the channel, hits it off his shoulder and misses another sitter. I don't know what that noise actually is. I don't know if it's rain battering against the windy or it's the Celtic fans bottling a 2 0 lead at half time, but we're rocking and rolling as Connor Goldson should make it 1 1. But it does now. And that's been Connor Goldson all season. Sitter after sitter, chance after chance, moment after moments passed them by. And it's, it's crap to say, as you know, I've been a solid, solid defender of Connor Goldson for many years because I appreciate what he brought into the team at the team uh, at the time that he did, the rock that the foundations were built upon, manager after manager, year after year. But it's now looking like he's one of the other ones that's in amongst the likes of the Camaras, the Kents, the, the Morelosis, that stayed on just a little bit too long. As it's just dreadful for the big and He just can't get his head on it. He ends up shouldering it. And then a couple of minutes later, he's chicken arming another cross and giving away a penalty. And it's it's just madness. It's needless. That has to be 1-1. One, one. And then a couple of minutes later, which we'll talk about in a second for the penalty, he just needs to stop all this. And froze, he did it. I'm sick. He's saying it and sick of needing to talk about it. We have read Lucky for many times when he's handballed it in the past because, again, this isn't a handball because it's sitting in his face. But that, yeah, is just dreadful. But before we speak about that, Celtic should make it too, by the way, as after our gifted opportunity for Goldson to score, Maeda gets an opportunity from Tavernier and Goldson. Dreadful for the two of them. Plays in, Maeda just needs to hit the right hand side of the goal and he's got a goal but he blasts it straight at Jack Butlin, thankfully. But even the rebound, the way it came out, great save by Butlin. Where's Diamandi? Where's Lunny? We're all trying to be slow, we're all trying to hold on to the ball too long, we end up losing it again and it falls to Atati. The one player on the part, in fact the one player in Scottish football, you didn't give time to at the edge of the box but we part like the Red Sea and allow him to have a free shot that thankfully just whispers wide but you see the insanity that's sprinkled throughout this game, there's moments, there's man, you're just saying... What are we doing? It's self-inflicted nonsense and self-inflicted nonsense takes us to the chicken arm penalty. No complaints about this. It's a minute after they should have made it 2-0. The cross comes in, falls to Butler. And I'm thinking, oh, we got away with that. And then I see a replay and I'm like, what are they checking VAR for? And then I see, obviously, uh, you go and check whatever you're doing. If you're watching the host, telly, pub, game, whatever, you check your phone, blah, blah, blah. Have a look, what are they talking about? And then you see it and you're like, oh, well, this is going to be a penalty. And it was a very short, short VAR review. No complaints. That is a penalty every day of the week. And I don't understand why he's actually doing it, troops. 
throw your head at it. So at Celtic's 14th league penalty this season and up this step and O'Reilly tucks away down the middle, it's calm, it's composed, he's, quality, he's a quality player, he shows his quality, he tucks it down the middle and it's 2-0 and then you're looking at end, to the end of a barrel, a, a gun, that's it. Ladies, it feels like that in the heart. Then Kyogo has a sitter. O'Reilly, who has already scored the penalty, by the way, has a wonderful header that is somehow tipped over brilliantly by Jack Butler. And I'm pretty sure everyone's forgot about that save, but that's the save I've been waiting for him to have. That's the moment I've been waiting him to have in against Celtic. And that was it. Phenomenal. Kuhn whips it in. Riley header. Looks like it's gone in. Tip there, the bar, man. It's just punch after punch, chance after chance. You're sitting like, does Rangers even want this? They're just punting the ball out. It's just booze. There's, the teams doesn't look like they know what they're doing. It was dreadful. Honestly, dreadful, ladies and gentlemen. The only real respite we had was in the 45th minute. Ball gets fired into Dessers. Dessers does brilliant to stop the ball deed. Silva takes over. Silva has two bites at the cherry, but can he beat Joe Hart? It's, it's a sitter. It's a chance, and it's the thing we wanted in January. The goal scorer, the guy that's going to get a chance like this, that's going to put it away. But that's not who Silver is. You know what I mean? When you bring attackers in who are good at everything but scoring goals, you can't complain and be frustrated at when they're good at everything but they didn't score goals. It's like my centre back, Paul, is saying every window I make the same video. I want new centre backs that can either about. I want defensive mind centre backs. But what is happening? What's the policy in this club? We buy attackers who are good at everything but scoring goals, and we buy defenders who are ball playing defenders that can run out with the ball that can stride with the ball and can great this pass and do this pass but that's their style they're ball playing defenders that can't defend it. their defensive instincts are not spot they are no aerial threats or anything like that that's what we go for and that's where I feel like the policy's been wrong for many many years is that's what's littered in our team we've got two centre backs that's better with the ball at their feet than the ball in the air which doesn't feel right to me and we're bringing in people and bringing in attackers that aren't known for scoring goals, and that's the moments, that's the difference, and aye, 2-0 was rough at halftime, it was miserable, it was horrendous, and we talked about Dessler very briefly, they are talking about the great first touch, and I want to speak about Dessler's because a lot was made last old form, and rightly so, he was the villain, you know what I mean, the big chance, gone, dreadful, blah blah blah, people piled on him, and the, the abuse that that man got, but talk about mentality, strength, mentality, monster, I just like this guy, and just the way he goes about his business, and I felt bad for him the day, I really, really did, up against Carter Vickers, who we've seen had, we've seen bully the likes of Morelos, and everything like that, Big Dessers was getting in there, he was winning some change, but he just had three boys behind him, that was near, near it the day, again, Scott Wright, Lawrence, and Silva, dreadful, all day and it just wasn't happening for the big laddie but he created that moment second taffy scored a good goal that was eventually pulled off because there was a foul 48 minutes prior in the actual build up and then he's a whisker away for scoring the winner in the 98th minute I know he was the villain last time and people were going to slaughter this and slaughter that but I just want to say very briefly on Dessers because we did kick him when he was doing in the last Old Firm game because he was really poor I thought he was one that could probably leave the part with his head held high today kept working kept grafting kept scrapping if we had more quality around them and players turned up around them and approached the game like he did would have probably won the day so aye Dessers gets my respect so 2-0 half time Celtic currently 4 points in front that's the way it's looking we then have to go to Dundee a tough game and they're just fighting battling to be 1 point behind Celtic we have to rely on other people it could be really frustrating it could be worried that's how it felt like they were all celebrating they were tweeting me ha can I wait for the video the night He's still waiting up to actually watch it. That would be interesting because it just looked like it was gone one way. But the Rangers team battled and fought. And we're going to talk about Silva again because Silva's going to be the name on everyone's lips. And I've discussed his first half performance. Just no for me or that. No for me, ladies and gentlemen. And the second half didn't start off much better as he did have already one dive in the box, if I'm honest with you, when he was just kind of shoved over by Johnson. It's not a penalty, there's just, it's just no a penalty there. Hatati then has a shot that's well saved, well held, by the way, with Butland. And then I see uh, Silva get booked for diving again. And I'll be honest, when I first seen it, I went, oh, he's dived again, man. I'm getting ready. I'm like, get this guy off. He's doing my absolute napper. And that's two dives in five minutes. I'm sick of the sight. And then I kind of peek and I'm going, why is he picked the ball? Why is he gave it to? Why is he telling Tavernier to come to the penalty spot? Why is he wait? And that just kind of gave me like there must be something in because somebody doesn't have that much belief if he's dived to tell the guy to come up to the penalty and he's standing at the penalty spot and then I'm like, did he dive? 
did he die? And I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to look. I'm like, what's happened there? And then there's a var call. Then John Beaton goes over, and then they're looking at it and everything like that. And again, there is contact on the knee, and he does clip him. Now, is Silva going on the way down? Aye. That's the modern day now, ladies and gentlemen. It's buying and selling, selling penalties. We see it multiple times a season. I mean, put the Liverpool Man United game on soon. Salah is known for it. Buys them every single time. It's just the way the modern day is. There's contact on the knee. That's why there. That's why the penalty is given. You have to give it at that actual point. And I upsteps Tavney with a lot of pressure having missed his last two penalties. But he puts it right in the breadbasket, and then you're thinking, there we are, there's one, have we got any now, again, Seamus came on, so we've got an actual right winger on, there's a player there, running at a defender, occupying space, being a presence, putting on press, we've actually got players doing some jobs, and then the ball's in the back of it, 2-2, two, two, and I'm like Jack, in that episode of Still Game, when they're taking the tablets, when everybody else leaves them, I'm not paying attention, I'm up dancing, I'm boogieing, ladies and gentlemen, and then the arm stop, and I'm going, What's the length of VAR all about? I'm going, what's going on here? And the goal that Big Dessers deserves to have scored the day is chopped off as the ball was won originally by Tom Lawrence. It's played out to Seema. Seema runs wide, whips across in, it gets blocked, comes back in, falls. I think Lawrence actually ends up getting a shot on it that's saved by the goal and Dessers tucks it away. But that is robbed away as there's a foul in the build-up about 30 seconds before. And aye, it is a foul. I can't really complain too much. It's just... I, d I don't know, how far do you go back, man? Are we going back to the first minute to see what was the goal kick that was won? Was it fairly won or anything like that? It's a foul in the build-up, fair enough, chop it off. If that's the way the game is these days, that's the letter of the law. Just like we're talking about the penalty, Silva's bought it. Yeah, he has bought it, but there's contact there. So it's the letter of the law. This goal right here is chopped off because there is a foul 30 seconds before the ball goes in and... That's just the way, that's the way football's gone, ladies and gentlemen. It's not that the hearts and the emotions are in a lot these days, these incidences, these things that frustrate and people are complaining about is the way it's gone. Techni technical, um, technically driven, technology driven, I should say, sorry. Football is where we're heading, computerised this, computerised that, and I, it's chopped off as there's a foul of 30 seconds before Dessers has the ball in the back of it, and it did just kill it because, again, you're up. One back, let's go, you've got the two. Then it's a little bit deflated and the game starts to fizzle just a little bit. A couple changes are made on the Celtic end. They bring on Callum McGregor. Thank God they did, by the way. He's probably the best Rangers midfielder in the park today for us. Thank God for that substitution. You'll find out more about that in a couple minutes. But eventually we started to make our changes as Silva, who, yes, won the penalty. And people can talk about it. I got an assist. I don't care, man. It's a lot of flop about being a luxury player on that wing there. No helping out, fawn about, rolling about, allowing yourself to be against 10 men. Leave me with that crap, ladies and gentlemen. So he ends up getting substituted off. Lawrence, who was the biggest disappointment for me because I expect Mayer for that laddie, just wasn't at the races. On comes Todd Cantwell, who'd have had on 15 minutes in at the game, if I'm honest with you. And on comes Rabbi Matundo. And we all know how vital that substitution will have to be. But before we obviously get there, ladies and gentlemen, I just thought not only because of the goal, but just the energy. The front three behind Dessers arguably should have been the one that started the game because it really had quality. There was good players in good pos positions and they were right up for the game. I mean, the 77th minute, as soon as Rabi really came on, he cut inside, tried to do what he had done the week prior at Acer Road and what he was about to do a few minutes later, but it's such a really good block by Carter Vickers. You think, right, come on, can, can we just get a wee bit of luck? Can we get a wee bit of luck? Celtic's not really doing much at all now. They've took Kyogo off. They're lost their danger men, they've not really got anything there to fear, it was just getting that second goal and let's grab a draw and then it ends up happening ladies and gentlemen and we mentioned Carl McGregor probably being the best uh, Rangers midfielder in the part that day and he really, really was as he lived his boyhood dream again, Sean Michaels S by scoring another goal for Rangers in an old fun game as he starts the move and he finishes it. It's a poor ball in the middle of the park that, to be fair, Sterling bombs his way into, grabs the ball, plays out to Rabi Matondo. He tries to whip in across it. Unfortunately, hits Dessers in the back of the head, drops the big Seamus, who's no faffing about it, swings his bit, smashes it, and it ends up hitting off Callum McGregor and going in to the back of the net. The game started with a fluky goal. It's probably ended with a fluky goal. It's right up perfectly. There's the two each. We've somehow stole a draw. They've scored again. 
And I, this is the dagger, this is the stab, this is the moment that the league is lost, in my personal opinion. That there is it. We've seen it before, we've experienced the pain, we've seen what it's done mentally to have such a high to be ripped away. It felt like it was done and buried. But again, this is a credit to the man that's leading this, some might say, misfit collection of Rangers. Players ranging from very good to iffy in terms of ability. The belief, the drive to keep at it. And I'm so, so, so damn proud that it was Ravi Matundo that won this game. And the way that he did, the goal will be what it is. You know what I mean? I'll take a life on it saying people will talk about the quality of that goal. The jinking inside, the putting it right in the bread basket. But I want to talk mayor than that because this is a lad they are backed, and I take a lot of crap for for liking. He's got the attributes, he's got son, but he's so incredibly young. If he was our own youth player, we'd be saying he's still young, he deserves mere chances. This is a guy who has had that shot and he's missed it and he's got the booze and he's had the crowds and he's been void of conference. We've heard it from his own mouth in terms of his Rangers career. He's felt that he's lost a bit of conference but that goal with Easter Road was special and just shows you what the difference a conference can make and I love that it was that young man. I love he had the balls to do it. I love that it went into the back in it and for me this young lad he deserves now an opportunity. I know we're paid the money to get uh, um, Fabio Silva on loan for Wolves and everything like that but that's a guy who scored in back to back scream dreams on that left hand side who's pacey who's raw who's got something about him I'm a big fan of that lad a massive fan of that goal and for me Dessers Cantwell Seema and Rabi is a front four that has enough quality to get you over the line with the rest of the season that's there in my personal opinion but what an absolute screamer just for the brink again and perfectly sums up this team and almost perfectly replicates the season if you think about it right Celtic take the lead whilst we are doing mad things right that's what was happening under B Beal Ball everything like that we go 2-0 down behind after shooting ourselves in the foot again again summarising where we were they take our lead in terms of the league title like they did in this game it looks dead and buried but slowly but surely this Rangers team chips 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 there's bumps in the road the Aberdeen draw the Mullerwell loss just like the goal chopped off in the 2-2 scenario in terms of Dessers but the team never gave up they never um, surrendered they kept fighting and fighting and fighting and they just went and got the point that they probably deserved when it was all said and done and again my biggest question needs to be why can we win a second half free one versus Celtic but we played such a poor first half again versus them let's get the confidence let's get the belief let's go down swinging but let's start we're fists up. Let's not just come out the back and having to dig ourselves out a hole that we've put ourselves in. And let's get real belief. That was a 3-1 win in the second half, ladies and gentlemen. If we weren't to put the worst performance I've ever seen in the first half, we'd be completely talking about a different game. But that's the approach. That's what we need to learn. And again, we've realised who's big game players and who's no. Who's good enough and who's no. And hopefully that continues going in to the rest of the seasons. Again, it's all in our hands and that's my thoughts and opinions from a neutral perspective it's probably a brilliant game brilliant goals drama flute goals flute moments everything like that penalty dramas Rangers Rangers, Rangers and Celtic are 14 each in terms of penalties this season it is madness people will talk about referees all this malarkey do what they need today but ladies and gentlemen when we were doing an oot Rangers go back up and start scrapping and that's what you can ask for and again, still on in our hands. What were you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. I can't really give a man of the match in this game because individually I wouldn't say anybody stood out but collectively as a team did I see enough in there to say you know what, there's fighting spirit in there. Yes, ladies and gentlemen and I just hope we can channel that second half spirit and get it in. 10 minutes, let's see that for 90 minutes, let's see that belief, let's see that attacking mindset, because Celtic didn't like it, they didn't like going back this way, they only like going that way, and I just hope the penny drops in the last old firm, but until then, there's plenty of games, there's plenty of drama to go, again, if it was all just doing the old firm, Celtic would be flying and far away in terms of the league. But it's no, there's still games upon the horizon and it's not all said and done. Time to do our jobs. Keep that fighting energy that we had, that spirit, that never say die attitude. And we could be lifting trophies at the end of the season. But that's my thoughts and opinions on the game. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. I imagine it'll be pretty spicy. And until then, I've been CJ over 92. Enjoy WrestleMania. Hopefully see a story finished tonight. Until then, Take care of yourselves, all the best, and bye-bye.